Hey there guys and girls, or mostly girls, as it's mostly girls that watch my channel, but hey guys too, the few of you that are here. Um, so today we are going to be talking about my college, well, my grad school application process. Um, I'm also going to be mentioning some tips and tricks that I learned along the way that really helped to boost my application and that could help you with yours too. Um, and if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe on your way out as well. Um, I'm also going to be doing this a little bit differently. Rather than just sitting here and talking to you, I'm going to be doing this in a chit chat, get ready with me way where I put on my makeup in the process. So I am in no way a beauty guru or a beauty person. So I'm not really going to be describing what I'm doing, but I will be mentioning the products that I use and hopefully you learn something. I kind of just wing my makeup as I do it. I know it works on my face. So that's what I do. Like I have been putting on makeup for a few years, so I know what makes my face looks nice. But again, I am still mostly winging it. So I'm not here to teach anybody anything. <laughs> but anyways, Let's get into it. Okay, so the story begins with our edges and it also begins back when I was an undergrad. So when I was an undergrad, um, I studied chemistry in my undergraduate degree. And, you know, when you study a science like that, um, grad school, is a pretty not necessarily an obvious choice but it's definitely something that you're encouraged to consider from the beginning um, because you know most people who study chemistry either want to go to med school or they want to do pharmacy stuff like that or nursing even maybe they want to do or they want to go into academia or industry so it's kind of like, what exactly do you want to do with this science degree that you're getting? And you're basically encouraged to figure that out pretty quickly. So from like junior year, which is your fourth year of university, you're encouraged to start thinking about grad school and if that's something you want. So in America, I did my undergraduate degree in America. It's pretty much looked down upon if I don't really know about the other sciences but in chemistry especially um, although I had a roommate who was in neuroscience and it was something similar for her too it's kind of looked down upon if you get a master's degree and like that's your end goal like <laughs> your end goal is the master's degree so that's kind of frowned upon because According to my teacher who I went to because um, I was looking into studying his form of chemistry. He was a, the head of the polymer chemistry department at my university and polymer chemistry was something I was interested in. Um, so according to him, a master's degree kind of looks like a failed PhD because you know, when you do the PhD but you don't pass your thesis, like you don't defend your thesis well, you still come out with a master's degree because you fulfilled the requirements of a master's. You just haven't defended your thesis well enough to get um, a PhD. A master's is kind of seen as a failed PhD, but there's also the case of in the industry and in academia, Again, this is mostly for the sciences. I don't know about other um, fields. It's the kind of thing where most of the jobs and most of the positions are either for um, people with bachelor's degrees, so entry level things for people with bachelor's degrees or people with PhDs. There's no in-between level for people with a master's. So that was something I had to consider as well. So I was like, I want to get a master's because the thing was, I didn't have that much research experience. Um, PhD is a very research intensive thing. So to get, to go straight to the PhD program, you have to have done 
quite a bit of research in your undergraduate degree to show the schools you're applying to that you are interested in research and they should take you because clearly research is something you're passionate about. Because the, P because the master's degree is kind of frowned, on, frowned upon, a lot of schools don't actually offer one, especially in chemistry. They offer PhDs, but not really a master's. <laughs> So if I wanted to apply to top schools in my field, I had to apply for a PhD. I didn't have a choice. So um, upon speaking to my professor at school who was head of the polymer chemistry department, I had told him I want to study polymer chemistry. What do you recommend I do? And he was like, well, it's probably best to like, take a year off, do some research experience and then apply. But I was also being called back home <laughs> back to our motherland to do NYSC. So if you're not Nigerian, NYSC is this thing that um, recent graduates have to do. You don't necessarily have to do it after your bachelor's degree. You can do it after your master's or after you're done with med school or, um, or law school, whatever, whatever. But it's just something you have to do before you enter the workforce in Nigeria. Um, so it's basically just like serving your government for a year, you go to camp for three weeks and then they assign you to an office or if you have an office that wants you, they request you and then you work there for a year. There's like some other stuff that goes into it, but I'm sorry, I'm really not bothered to explain it. Um, so I worked at an analytical chemistry um, laboratory in Ikeja thinking that that would give me the research experience I needed because it was still working in the field. So during the application process, one thing that I had been told was that um, it's good to have a relationship with the school you're applying to. So they always encourage you to message the team. So part of the application process, this is the same for Canada as well, when you're applying, especially for research-based master's programs or PhD programs, where you might be under a supervisor, they encourage you to include the supervisor you want in your application and put as part of your essay why you want to work under them. So one thing they encourage is that if you're putting certain people in your application, you should reach out to them, establish a relationship with them, and um, just like talk to them and everything, interview with them because at the end of the day, they could also play a part in you getting into the school. If they like you and they want you, they can talk to the admissions board and tell them that they want you. This, I don't know if this applies to all schools, but it definitely does help if you try and form a relationship with the school you're going to. I didn't do this when I was applying for my PhD per because um, I really just wanted to go back to my school that I had done my um, undergraduate degree in and work for the professor I'd spoken to. And I had a relationship with him already. Like we had established that I wanted to join his group. Like we had already discussed this and everything. Oh, by the way, sorry. The primer I used was um, Primer Plus Protection SPF 50 from Bobby Brown. And then the foundation I use is the Clinique Stay Matte Oil-Free Makeup. So I use shade 24 golden and 23 ginger. I'm like kind of in between the two, so I just mix them. <laughs> Prior to moving to Canada, I was more 24 than I was 23. But now that I have barely seen the, seen the sunlight in a while, I'm more 23 than I am 24 now. So yeah, anyway, I had established that relationship with him. So the other schools I were applying to were mostly just like eye service really and just for like more options. So I didn't actually really bother in like forming that relationship. And that was very much detrimental to me because not only did I not get into any of the schools that I applied to, I applied to six schools. Not only did I not get into any of the six schools, but even the school, my school that I wanted to go to that I had established that relationship um, I didn't get in there either. 
and so one thing that I did was I actually so you can if you don't get into the school you can request for them to send you the notes from admissions to see what the admissions committee had put in your document so basically to see why they rejected you and I did this with two schools I did this um, with the school I wanted and I also did it with another school the thing that was common in the both of them was that I didn't have the research experience necessary. Also, I did the GRE chemistry because GRE is um, needed if you go to school in America, if you're doing grad school in America. And my GRE chemistry score was abysmal. <laughs> so that was also part of it. But yeah, I was like distraught. I didn't know what to do. All of my plans were like hinging on the fact that I would use like going to my PhD to Jakba basically um, because there's not a lot of opportunities for scientists in Nigeria like most scientists most people who do science in Nigeria they always like nine times 9.5 times out of 10 actually they end up working outside of the field they study because there's just not a lot of opportunities in Nigeria and even if they are again 9.5 times of the out of 10 of the opportunities for scientists in Nigeria are terrible like they don't pay well um the conditions you're working in are not the greatest and it's just it's a whole situation really that was not desirable to me so i really didn't want to work there most of the the only chemists that make good money in nigeria are the oil and gas chemists well scientists in general so the geologists the chemists the petrochemists the engineers in the oil and gas industry they are the ones who make money everyone else not really and I was not interested in oil and gas I wanted to do research specifically research that would help or would apply to the medicinal or the pharmaceutical industry so I wanted to make something or discover something that would help particularly in like cancer research or just like medicinal research really. So that was like my main thing. I really wanted to do something that was like either polymers or nanotechnology that, nanotechnology kind of falls under polymers. So um, I really wanted to do something that would apply to the medical field. So my dad was like, okay, you know what? You didn't get into school in America. He also partially blamed Donald Trump. <laughs> He was like, America's racist, don't mind them. Like, let's look at Canada. Canada is still an option, let's look there. So I was like, all right, cool. And so the first thing I discovered about Canada when I started looking was that they offered master's degrees. In fact, unlike America, where you can go straight from bachelor's to PhD, you cannot enter a PhD program in Canada without a master's degree. So I was like, all right, cool, bet, love it. And another thing that attracted me about Canada was that most of the schools also had the option that um, if you do the master's before you graduate from your master's they give you if you finish your requirements obviously they give you the option to transfer into the PhD program if that's what you want to do which was amazing to me so I was like yes yes this is everything I've ever wanted everything I've ever needed so I applied to three schools. I applied to McGill, I applied to Carleton, and I applied to the school I currently go to. So um, this is where I made another mistake. I made the same mistake again. I didn't reach out to anybody in the program, in the programs that I applied to. So I was just like, I just applied and you know left it to God and of course the rejection email started rolling in and I was like what the hell is going on so I'm not good enough for a PhD I'm also not good enough for a master's like what is this but then the school I currently go to their rejection email said I'd apply for January entry by the way because when I got my um, rejection letters from America the applications for September had already closed for other schools so I had to apply for January entry 
Okay, um, the brow pencil I'm using, by the way, is from Estee Lauder. It's the Brow Multitasker. It has um, the pencil, it has the brush, and it also has this that you can use to fill in your brows, which is pretty cool. So yeah, so the rejection that I got from the school I got into actually said, um, the words they used were, not that you weren't good enough or whatever, but that they didn't have an available supervisor for me. So I emailed the school and I was like, hey, so it says here that the reason I'm not being accepted into the program is because there's no available supervisor. What does that mean? So the person I spoke to was basically like, I had been talking to her a lot because they also took the, a long ass time to give me my um, rejection letter, I guess, to give me my decision. And I was like, yo, school starts in January. It is now October. If I'm coming to Canada, this was in 2019, so COVID had not happened yet. Um, so I was like, if I'm coming to Canada, I need to apply for my visa. Visas, visa applications for Canada and Nigeria take ages. So I need to apply now. So we had been talking quite a lot. And um, by the way, this was the Zaron Perfect Finish Primer. This is a Nigerian brand. Highly recommend, they have good stuff. I just use it to like help set my makeup for a second layer. This helps with my lap lines because I get those quite a lot. <laughs> so this helps to set my lap lines. This is pretty much the only instruction I will give you because um, I learned this from someone else actually while I was an undergrad and it has worked for me ever since. And I never ever get laugh lines. So just spray setting spray on it and then use it to put on a second layer around your around your laugh line. So yeah, um, so she was like, okay, what I recommend you doing is find the supervisors you want and email them. And talk to them and see what happens basically see if they can take you from me because I hadn't gotten in for January. So she was like, we'll redo your application. Like we'll put your application back in for free since, um, what's it? Like basically she felt bad for me. So she was like, we'll put your application back in for free and um, for me and just email them and see what happens. So I emailed two supervisors who's, um, programs whose research seemed interesting to me and that I wanted to join their groups and one of them only one got back to me so this is also from Zaron this is their face definer it's kind of like a contour kit um, one of them got back to me and that's the one that I currently work for so he got back to me he messaged me and he's like hey Thanks for showing interest, like let's talk, let's set up a call, whatever, whatever. So we spoke, he was pretty chill. He is a very chill guy, I love him so much. He is the absolute best. If anyone sees my tweets about my supervisor, he, he, he like really thinks I'm some kind of genius. And like, I don't know why. I really don't know what I said or did in this interview that we had. But yeah, so he like sent me a couple papers based on the research that they do and was like, okay, read this and then we'll talk again in a week and I'll quiz you on it. And I was like, all right. So the research that they do is, um, well, we, I guess. The research that we do is based on like cancer treatments and discovering cancer treatments, but it's a very unique way of doing it. And it's such a like niche thing that it kind of incorporates chemistry, biochemistry, biology, and even a little bit of engineering. So they don't expect anybody who is new to the group to know everything based off of it. So he only quizzed me on the chemistry of it to see like, okay, I get it, you're a chemist, you probably won't know the biology or the engineering and biochemistry, et cetera, et cetera. But do you know the chemistry behind what we're doing? And I did. I like to think that I'm a good chemist. Like I don't test well, which is part of why 
my grades were not the best I because testing requires a lot of memorization and my memory is trash especially in chemistry because you have to remember all these reactions and if you add this and this what will you get and I don't believe in doing that because when you work in industry or when you're teaching or whatever you always have that knowledge available to you like you will always be able to look it up in real life so I don't know why I'm being tested on it so if I'm able to like properly do the research I'll get it but if you test me on it like quick fire like oh you know what is this I probably won't do that well so I was able to show him that like you know I understand the material blah 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 and he was impressed so he petitioned for me to join their group and petitioned admissions that they should let me into the school and that ladies and gentlemen is how I finally got in. Um, by forming that relationship and having him, because apparently our group is one of the biggest chemistry group. Technically, we're under chemistry, even though we have like all these interdisciplinary studies, we're still technically under chemistry. But it's one of the most biggest and most funded groups in the school. So they were powerful enough to be like, we want her to let her into the school. And they did. And that is how I am now doing a master's degree that I have the option of turning into a PhD. So the moral of the story, kids, I'm not even like halfway done with my makeup, but the story is almost over. Um, the moral of the story is kids, make that connection. So if you're in a if you're looking for a program, whether it be a master's or a PhD, that requires you like doing some form of research, look up the professors in the school in that department, message them, tell them you're looking to be in that field of study, and you want to work with them, and see just like you know, make that relationship because when it comes to it when your application is on there there if you especially if you include those professors in your application they will reach out to those professors and say did this student reach out to you if yes what did you think about them do you think we should let them in um and if you didn't they'll be like no i have no idea who the student is like <laughs> and that might not work in your favor so i'm one of those weird people that does their like eye makeup after they've done everything else, which probably isn't smart, but that's me. Moral of the story is to form that relationship because it can be very helpful. Even if you're applying to a program that doesn't have that, you can become friends. You can like form that relationship with someone in the admissions department themselves, even if like you can't talk to a professor or something. You can, you know, contact the admissions at the end of the day they are there to help you if you're applying to the program so just you know ask them for a meeting if they're free for a meeting ask them if they're free for a call speak to them form that relationship but again like you have to also make sure that you are kind of qualified at least for the program that you're applying for if you're not qualified at all there's only so much they can do um because they have to defend you and like you have to show your you have skills in something so that they can defend you by saying oh but like they're good at this and they they showed this and you know you have to be able to show them something um the eyeliner i used was the liquid liner from anastasia or anastasia i don't know how that's pronounced please don't roast me in the comments and then the highlighter i'm going to use is the 3d beauty the 3D Highlighter Palette from Huda Beauty. This is the Bronze Sands Edition. It's very pretty. Look at that. But yeah. So, it, so like if you're in an MBA or you're in a regular master's that's not thesis based, you probably won't be able to like do that. But talk to, but again, like you can still form a relationship with the people in admissions. 
because if you're forming a relationship with people in admissions, they will be the ones that are there when they're looking over your application and they can defend you to the committee because it's always a committee that does the application process. It's never just one person. It's a committee of people that'll look at it, that'll look at your application and they can defend your application to the committee by being like, oh, but you know, I spoke to them and they're good at this and they're good at that and they're passionate about this and they're passionate about that. And bing, bang, boom, you might be able to get in. <laughs> so again, like that's one of the key things. And honestly, that's really a key thing to anything in life. Networking, relationships, all of that. That can really, really help you in multiple aspects of life, not even just school, jobs, um, scholarships, grants, all of this stuff. Networking and forming relationships with the right people will really help you. That is the second, this is the second to last step of my makeup, which is using the Urban Decay All Nighter. This was super, super popular years ago. It was like making rounds everywhere. This is not the second to last step. What am I talking about? I still have my lipstick. <laughs> um, but after that is mascara. This is the second to last step. This, by the way, is the Better Than, Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced. To be honest, I don't know that it's all that great to be calling it Better Than Sex. There are multiple mascaras that are better than this that could compete for that name, but hmm, anything to sell, I guess. So yeah, that is the story of how I got into grad school. It was a two year process because I started my applications in September-ish, October of 2018. And I finally got my acceptance letter into the school. Well, actually, no, it wasn't two years. It was like a year and plus, I guess. But yeah, I finally got accepted into school in January of 2020. 2020, what a year that was. Um, here I am using the Rouge Per Couture Lipstick by YSL. It's a very bright red. I love it. Oh, look at that pigment. And that is it, my friends. The makeup is done. The story is done. I am now in my first year of my master's program. Um, hopefully I'll be transferring to a PhD next year before I'm required to defend my thesis as a master's student. And it all happened thanks to networking. Well, obviously also because I had <laughs> the skills and the knowledge necessary, so again, these people you're networking with can only do so much for you if you don't have the skills and the knowledge to back it up. So make sure you're applying to schools that you know that you should be qualified for. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. We just hit a thousand subscribers a few weeks ago. Let's try and get to 2,000. Thank you so much to everyone that participated in the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. If we hit 2,000, who knows? There might be an even bigger one. No promise though. But let's see if we can try. Um, so yeah, if there's any other videos or anything else you want me to talk about, just leave it in the comments below and I will look at it. Again, I am still constrained to my apartment. I think we're still on the lockdown for another three weeks or so. That is if Doug Ford decides, you know, to punish us a little bit more and extend it again. But otherwise, I am still just in my apartment. So please give me some ideas of things you want me to talk about or do that I can do at home. Um, but yeah, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys are staying safe.